All right, we're setting off now on our two nights, three days hiking trip in the Black Mountains of Wales. All right, let's have a look at Charlie's bushcraft packing. What have we got here? The basics. We've got some toilet roll, lighting material, otherwise known as matches. We've got toiletries consisting of a toothbrush, some soap, a flannel, some gloves for my whittling, my whittling package, a saw for firewood, a knife for firewood. Very minimalist compared to this ridiculous 18 kilo. <laughs> Follow me into the woods, my friend. And with that, we set off on our journey. Our first destination was a coppice between the farm and the Dragon's Back land formation. We're just heading now to an ancient coppice of alder and hazel. There's the Dragon's Back over there. That whole ridge. Because it's like a Dragon's Back. After a short hike, we arrived in the forested area. We now had to search for a suitable campsite and Charlie said he'd show me how to make a fire. I can't remember it myself though. <laughs> third, third. <laughs> Random bath. So we're in the forest now where we're gonna find a camp spot. That's all hazel, of the hazelnut. And they also have this type of leafy leaf. Easy peasy. All the trees are these biggies. Oh yeah, with all the moss. And so it's all been, this is like, I said it's a coppice, right? What does coppice mean then? Coppice means you cut it. It's, it's a thing that happens with deciduous trees. So broadleaf trees, not conifer. When you cut a deciduous tree, it, it, will grow back from that stump. That's why you've got several shoots. Yeah. I'm going to go between these two trees then. Let's do it. Casual, casual. Looking back. Here's my tent for the night. It's quite compact, but pretty comfortable. Got the memory foam pillow in there, inflatable mattress. I want a fire, so so I want dead standing wood, which is dead wood, but it's not on the floor, it's standing. So like this is a tree that's fallen and it's dead. This it's going to be dry as shit. You got it, you got it. Oh yeah. Woo. Nice. So now we're building the base of the fire with some big wood. Big wood, hashtag big wood. I lit some balled up toilet paper in a loose arrangement. The kindling above soon caught fire. After adding a few small sticks, we had a decent fire going. Beautiful man. Let's get cozy then.
7 a.m. Wide awake. The dawn chorus here is super loud, but it's nice. Not a huge tent. My feet don't actually go all the way to the end, but what can you do? It's a one man tent. Alright, gonna get up now and carry on with our trick. Run out of water this morning, so I'm gonna go try and find some. Hopefully there's a stream around here somewhere. Can't see any water around here, so I'm gonna to have to look somewhere else, unfortunately. We eventually found a small stream, which will be a good test for my new water filter. We noticed a derelict farmhouse nearby and decided to investigate. It's awesome. It's just someone's house. There's all this old shit everywhere. They have proper doors. It's like a museum. After a short detour, our hike began. <laughs> That's it. Can't get cleaner. So we're heading for that peak up there. Uh well, and we're going we're gonna get in that valley bit there. But I'd say we go up there, follow that path, and then we're on the ridge line. Hang a left. Which will probably be up there eventually. Cool. We're hiking up towards the Dragon's back now. It's really neckering actually with this 18 kilos of pack, but it's my own fault for bringing it. Should have packed light like Charlie. There's a wild ponies around here. You can see them up on the hill. Peak in the distance is Penevan, the highest peak in the Brecon Beacons. As we trudged along the ridge of the dragon's back, we noticed a glider swooping overhead and beeping the horn at us. I was just gliding with no... How does it run? Soon we would arrive at a steeper section of the hill, so Charlie decided to take a nap and I took a pit stop. We're surrounded by wild ponies at the moment. I continued on alone, leaving Charlie with his new equine friends. I'm close to the highest point in the Black Mountains now, one back, just up that hill. And you can see from here the dragon's back, where it's been given that name. Awesome. All right, I'm at the top of one back. Amazing views. 
Now I've reached the summit, I need to go down the other side and try and find somewhere to camp. Charlie was having a nap with the horses, but hopefully he's gonna catch me up soon and we can build our campsite. I don't know whether it was my heavy pack or lack of sleep, but as we forged on across the hilltop, I became increasingly weary. Apparently at the top here on the left, we'll go down the hill towards the reservoir and we can look for our camp. Naka now, we can take a rest. As any hiker will tell you, the knee thumping descents can often be as difficult as the ascents. We continued down the hill, however, in search of our campsite. We're getting somewhere now, but we still have to get up that walkway, but we can do it. Is it this super steep right one or is it the left one? See the reservoir now, getting close to our final location. Made it to the reservoir. Yeah. Alright, looks like we found our camp spot. Feeling good? Yeah. He's going for a swim, doing the Wim Hof method. Going to be freezing in a minute. Look who we've got a fire. We're about to start. Lots of wood. Going to be good. Fire completed. Time to eat. Thanks, Charles. Bit foggy today. Morning on the campsite, and as you can see, it's super misty on the reservoir. So we're going to get packed up now. Right, it's our third and final day on the trail. We're heading home. We were gonna camp on those hills over there, but luckily we didn't, because it's absolutely full of sheep. I 
our return journey took us back over the hilltop near Wan Vak, eventually bringing us to the Dragon's Back for our final descent. Back at the farm now, absolutely knackered. Cup of tea. And with that, the end of another beautiful trip in the Black Mountains of Wales. As always, thanks for watching.